Hi, my name is Richard Shook with Amco Pumps. I'm here to show you the seal assembly and disassembly of the MC Hot Oil Pumps. First thing we're going to do is remove all the casing bolts. Right now we have them all hand tight, but these will typically be torqued down. So what you can use is an impact wrench to remove the bolts. And then for the ones in the harder to reach areas, we'll go ahead and use a wrapping wrench to get those disassembled. One thing that I found is a good way to keep everything safe within the pump is by reinstalling the top bolt or never removing it and just having it loose. This way, when the casing bolts are removed, the casing doesn't just simply drop down and potentially uh, damage the impeller. Now, if the pump is on a small enough motor, sometimes what you can do is lift the pump up onto the backside of the motor to be in a vertical orientation. This allows us to get access at these bolts that are underneath the casing and then we can remove the top bolt. If the motor is too large to be moved in that direction, up and over, what you can do is provide a wedge and sit the pump right onto that. And that also will give you enough leverage to be able to remove the bolts from the other side and to service the pump from the front end. So now I'll remove the casing. And I'll set that aside. Now you see we have the impeller nut and the impeller internal. What we're going to do is to press down on our impeller. Now normally these would be torqued. Currently we have these hand tight we're going to loosen. As we loosen, we want to just add a little bit of pressure onto the impeller to now allow easy movement of the nut and we can now very quickly disassemble. While keeping pressure on the impeller, We'll then put our hand on the back cover and gently glide the impeller off of the shaft. We'll set that aside. We'll remove the key and the seal spring. Now, right now, all that's left is just the shaft sleeve, so we'll go ahead and slide that out. On the shaft sleeve, you'll see that that's our rotating seal assembly. And then we have an O-ring that seals off between the backside of the impeller and the motor shaft. We'll then gently glide the back cover out of the adapter. Try not to hit the motor shaft as doing so could crack the internal seal. On a seal replacement, this is not as necessary because the seal may already be cracked, but for safety reasons, it is important to handle properly. As you can see in the bottom of the back cover, or also known as stuffing box, there is a seal that's pressed into the bottom of the cup. In order to remove, you'll just set the cover upside down on a rag. And using an o-ring pick, you can now gently glide that pick into the pin groove that's in the back cover and gently work it around to dislodge the seal from its seat.
once you've gotten it to a good amount of gap between the back seat face and the seal, you'll then just use your fingers to pop that seal out and allow it to drop down. There you go. The other option is to flip the pump altogether and pull the seal out from the top, or uh, the cover, pull the seal out from the top. So now what we'll do is we'll set those seal parts to the side. We'll grab our shaft sleeve, since we'll be reusing this, and our key, which will also be reused. So we'll grab a new seal kit, will contain both the rotating and the stationary seal faces along with the elastomers. When you open up the seal kit, the first thing that you'll notice is on the spring, there is a metal ring or cup that will be attached. This ring is for installation purposes only. It is not meant to be installed into the pump. So we'll take this ring We'll put it back with our seals to be discarded. We'll then remove our spring, set that aside. And now we have our rotating seal. And behind the rotating seal, we also have our stationary. To assemble the seal, we'll apply a little bit of lubricant to the O-ring compound that we are using here is a food grade NSF H1 rated grease. This can be provided through AMCO or through any of your local food grade lubricant suppliers. We'll then take note of where the notch is on the seal and where it's located inside of the back cover and we'll gradually drop our seal into that cover and align those notches. Now, if your stationary face is either carbon or silicon carbide, it is a lot of times easier to take the mating seal face and use that to install to give yourself some leverage on the stationary. If you're unable to seat the stationary with just your fingers, you can also add the spring so that further increase your leverage. There we go, just like that. Okay. So I was just situating the rubber boot to ensure that the engagement of the rubber boot onto the backside of its carrier is also appropriate. Sometimes this metal boot can be pushed underneath this lip, which can also cause installation issues. So be sure to pull the outside faces of the rubber boot as far out as you can to allow that lip to sit on the outside of the holding ring. So now what we'll do is lubricate the rubber boot. What you'll want to do is lubricate both sides. What you can see here is that there's two sets of rubber gaskets in there. You'll want to lubricate both of those surfaces. Just like that. And then you'll take seal face side that'll be on the chamfer side of your sleeve and you'll slide that on like so so now we have those two parts we'll set that aside we'll go ahead and install our back cover with the stationary seal We'll now hold that in place. We'll 
We'll then go to install our shaft sleeve. And we'll align the keyway with the keyway on the motor. From there, we can now install the key. Push the shaft sleeve all the way back. Now you'll see that the key is fully engaged. There should be a gap between the key and the end of the motor shaft. If there is not a gap, this key will make contact with the mating seal face components. Now we'll go ahead and install our spring, which will go over the sleeve head. And that snaps in just like that. We'll then take our impeller and slide that onto our shaft and engage the key and the spring. So now you can see that both the key and the spring are engaged with the impeller. You want to make sure that the backside of the spring sits flush to the impeller seat here. You'll then go ahead and push this all the way in and there is a mechanical stop, so you'll know where it ends. While you hold that, you'll then take your impeller nut and reinstall onto the shaft. Now to tighten, we'll then apply an additional metal block, or wooden block, to our impeller. Installed, we go ahead and install, reinstall the casing. And that will just align with the pilot surface. We'll go ahead and hold that in place and apply our top bolt. And now that should hold everything together and give us our hands back to work on the rest of the bolts. That's it. From there, we'll tor torque everything down to what's prescribed in the manual. Once everything is torqued, you can then take your wrench and do a quick check by inserting over the impeller nut and doing a turn to ensure that nothing is rubbing or making contact inside of the casing.